What's happening, everybody? Thanks for joining us today on Cinema Recap. Glad to have you here. Today, we're going to take a look at that 2021 sci-fi thriller called Mother Slash Android. The year's unknown, but we're getting some serious end of days future kind of vibes going on. Our protagonist, Georgia, sparks a fire by hand as she looks over some old Polaroid photos of a man that we don't know. She asks the question, is it ever possible to forget a person entirely? It's like you never met. See? Just like that. Flashback. The world's normal. We have Georgia and her boyfriend Sam, the man from that Polaroid photo, which I don't have high hopes for his survival, sitting on the bathroom floor contemplating some serious news. Georgia just found out that she's pregnant, but seeing as she's a teenage girl dating a teenage boy, she doesn't know what she wants to do. Sam's looking kind of confused as well, but he makes the bold suggestion that they get married and move in together. Oh heck, he even says that he loves her. And the look that Georgia gives him back, yeah, that one right there, is suggesting she doesn't love him. The two head into the living room, where their parents are wishing them a good night as they head off for a Christmas party. These two are still just kids. It's not surprising why Georgia didn't want to get married. Things become a little odd, though, when the butler, Eli, mistakenly wishes Sam a happy Halloween. Eli, it's Christmas. He's either all drunk on Christmas spirit or something's not quite right. And indeed, when Sam walks away, we see the butler's eyes flash blue. Eh, hold up, those could be just contacts. Sam and Georgia are now at a house party, which of course means drinking. Lots of drinking. This party has a butler similar to the one at George's house, and he's acting just as strange. But a quick interaction with the party's host and we realize that this butler is an android. He looks human, acts human, talks human. But as we're about to see, he sure as heck isn't human. Well, the couple get into a fight pretty quickly when Sam sees Georgia about to drink some alcohol. You know, with her being pregnant and all. Georgia's nosy friends get in the way and soon they're pulling her into the bathroom to talk about it. In the bathroom, Georgia laments on what she's going to do about Sam, about the baby. She's way over her head. I'm not ready for this. Eh, lucky enough, the world's about to end, so it might take her mind off of it a while. A high-pitched, ear-shattering screech erupts through the house, killing cell phones and all other tech. Georgia stumbles from the bathroom to see what happened and finds the party in a state of chaos. Dead bodies laying on the ground, and the android butler is doing the best he can to add to them. He chokes one of the teenagers, fights off another, chases after Sam and Georgia as they try to escape and even manages to pin Sam nearly killing him until a brave, probably very drunk, party-goer whacks the android over the head and shatters its metal skull. Now terrified, they run from the house to see that outside, it ain't much better. The world has descended into chaos as the androids rise up to overthrow their human masters. Fires, explosions, car crashes. This uprising has it all. Honestly, why anyone is surprised that their android butlers turn on him is beyond me. Haven't they seen this movie before? We cut forward nine months. Georgia and Sam are camping in the woods. They have a single tent, not much else. Well, they have each other. That's something, right? They lay huddled together, smiling, and speaking of the baby. Kind of seems as if they're actually in love. And that's when they hear a noise outside. Sam grabs the gun, hurries out to see what it is. He's open, it might just be an animal. But the message here is clear. The world is now a dangerous place. Probably not so safe for a teenage mom and her anxious boyfriend. Come back in, Sam. Now things have clearly changed for the two lovebirds. They spend the morning packing up their tent, getting themselves ready for a long day of walking. Georgia complains about her aches and pains, while Sam's joking trying to keep the mood light. Unfortunately, he's not very funny and the mood is morose. They're trekking through the forest, direction north. Now, they clearly have a specific destination in mind, but neither are too keen on getting there. This destination is an army camp, and when they get there, they're held at gunpoint as they're checked, making sure that they are humans, not androids. Which seems a bit redundant, assuming the pregnant belly might have been a giveaway. And as they're walking through the camp, we learn of what happened over these past nine months. A war has broken out between androids and humans, one that the humans are losing. Sam and George's goal is to reach Boston, where they've heard of a program that ships parents with newborns out of the country to Korea, where it's apparently safe. And they have to get there before the baby's born. Now, the plan is a sound one, except for one problem. 
Boston is impossible to get to. Bummer. It's surrounded by no man's land, a space dominated by androids. And even worse, Georgia now learns from her nurse that the program, shipping parents and children to Korea, only takes the mother, not the father. This is clearly new info for Georgia. But then there's some good news, shockingly. The nurse tells Georgia that she's too far along to travel anymore and that she can have the baby in the camp. Well, she's beyond relieved, clearly worried about giving birth in the wild. Meanwhile, Sam wanders through the camp and does a little bonding. Well, he tried if these guys in the camp weren't such pricks. He strikes up an awkward conversation with a soldier, asking him about getting to Boston. The soldier tells him it's impossible, because the entire city's surrounded by these androids. And then for good measure, the soldier shames him for trying to flee the country while the war's going on. I got a family, man. Who doesn't? So that night, an innocent conversation about what the two miss from the past soon turns into a fight. Classic. Georgia mentions that the boat they're hoping to catch out of Boston might only take women. And Sam says if that's the case, then she and the baby should just take it. A reasonable suggestion. Georgia, however, freaks out, thinking that Sam's going to abandon her. And he assures her that he's not by telling her that she's just being hormonal. Ah, this guy obviously understands women. We're going to get us a ride. Sam wanders down to a campfire where a bunch of rowdy soldiers are hanging out and drinking. He bumps into that prick from earlier and asks if he knows about any rides going into Boston. The soldier says he does, but Sam will have to fight him for the information. What? He's about to back out of that, but his fragile masculinity gets in the way and he agrees to the fight. We don't actually see the fight, but the next morning, George is dragged to the army commander's tent where Sam is tied up. Apparently, he beat that soldier pretty hard. So much, in fact, that he and her are being kicked out of the camp. Nice. They're pleading for him to reconsider, but it's too late. They're gone. They're no longer welcome on this base. At least my boy's masculinity is saved, and not that Georgia cares. Things are getting more tense between the two as they're trekking back into the woods. Georgia blames him for them being kicked out, and Sam's like he just wanted to protect her. This fight is compounded by the weather, beating rains, and harrowing winds. If they don't find shelter soon, their little fight will be the least of their concerns. And we see that they do find an abandoned house on the edge of the woods. And apart from it needing some serious renovations, it's warm and perfect for bedding down in. It's got a nice soft mattress for the two to sleep on, also finding a Polaroid camera, where he even manages to take a snap of himself. Raise your hand if you recognize this photo. And then finally, the two make up. Well, at least as much as they're able to, considering how terrible things are. Now that night, they go over their plans to get to Boston. George is still set on taking the long way, around no man's land to the north, and then coming back down to Boston by river. It's a journey that'll take around two weeks and requires some serious luck. Sam's really frustrated because Boston is only like 20 miles away, through no man's land. With a baby on the way, any day now, mind you, it's clear what he wants to do. He just has to convince Georgia. Before we go on, like the video, smash the subscribe button, turn on that notification bell, or Slender Man will haunt your dreams. So the next morning, Georgia walks outside to find Sam working on a dirt bike he found in the garage. He's explaining they can ride this through no man's land and be in Boston before the day's out. Well, she doesn't want to do it. It's too dangerous and they might get caught. But he points out that they have no choice. With that baby coming at any moment, they're as good as dead if they aren't somewhere safe soon, i.e. Boston. It's a risk they're gonna have to take. And for once, Sam actually gets his way. The first leg of the ride goes pretty smooth. And after a few hours, they take a small break by the lake. But that's where things take a turn. As Sam's working on the bike, Georgia spots what's either an android or a serious creeper watching him from the bushes. When it realizes it's been seen, it runs for him. Georgia hurries to the bike, jumps on, Sam takes off, and the chase begins. It's not just one android, but several, dressed in various outfits from their past. Note the random chef's outfit. The androids chase the motorbike as it flees through the woods, matching its pace despite the speed. We got drones flying in the sky too, tracking and following them, hovering in close, looking as if they're going to fly right into them. Sam navigates that bike the best he can, but it becomes clear very quickly that they're not going to get away. 
So thinking quick, Sam pulls over, ordering Georgia off the bike. She does so without thinking, and then he tells her to run. He'll lead the androids away. Before she can even argue, he's off. She calls out in distress, but then runs herself, tripping and falling as that baby kicks at her stomach. It's looking like it might be over for Georgia. Only for Tom Bombadil to... Wait, that's not Tom Bombadil. That's a random forest man. Well, the guy's name is Arthur, and he takes Georgia back to a secret bunker truck that he lives in. There, we learn. Not that much. Arthur isn't much for words. Even when asked a direct question. Is it safe to speak here? He's also pretty grumpy, a little angry, and clearly hates humanity. Although this seems more personal. And he's stating outright that humans had this war coming because of their arrogance. In short, he is in great company. He does, however, know a lot about the androids. Arthur used to be an engineer for the company that built them, and he's managed to design a cloak that makes the wear invisible to androids. He explains to her how smart these androids are, how they're able to use humankind's weakness, their empathy against them, like programming. This is why they took Sam to try and lure her to him. It's around now that the alarm bell should be sounding in George's head, but she's upset, so we'll forgive her. She's far more concerned about Sam, and Arthur's telling her that he's probably alive being held prisoner. And despite Arthur's obvious distrust of humans and people in general, he agrees to help. He lends her both of his invisibility cloaks and leads her to the camp where Sam's being kept. Going full Harry Potter, Georgia wears that cloak, sneaks into the camp, manages to get past the androids. Huh, looks like the cloak works. Well, she finds Sam, who can't believe that she's come for him. He's all in pain, foot broken, and he's trying to tell her to get out of here. She just wants him to be quiet. Another prisoner sees what they're doing and calls out, threatens to expose them if they don't help him escape as well. Now with no choice, Georgia throws that spare cloak over Sam and pulls him with her just as a couple of androids appear. They give chase, and it looks like they're going to capture the couple. But then Arthur rocks up and goes full Rambo. He takes down one with a machine gun and whips out a knife and sticks the other like a pig. That was unexpected. And then he helps the two lovebirds escape. But we all know that things aren't that easy. Soon, Georgia starts to go into labor. She stumbles and screams as Arthur tries to help her and Sam escape. He leads into the truck and throws him in the back. Georgia screams some more, collapses, and then passes out. When she wakes up, she's in the hospital. In Boston, she can't believe it. Arthur must have brought her here. Even better, Sam's there too. And he's fine. And what's more, her baby's been born and is perfectly healthy. Could it be a happy ending for the new parents? Well, a few moments later, an officer stops by the room to ask Georgia how she got here. She tells him her story about Arthur and the invisibility cloak that he built. Well, he stops her right there and tells her that the technology doesn't even exist yet. And I'm telling you, if that existed, don't you think we'd be using it? And he presses her to know what really happened, but she says that's what happened. Well, he looks confused, clearly not believing her. And then they hear gunfire. Well, so much for that happy ending. The officer runs to see what's the cause, but somehow Georgia already knows. Arthur. Those things he said earlier about hating humanity, about how smart the androids are, is suddenly seeming a little more relevant. Not so much the mutterings of a crazed man, but that of an android. Right away, she realizes what he means to do. Sam's passed out cold, so she leaves him. She hurries through the base, headed for where the EMP's located, the last line of defense against the androids. When she gets to the gates, Arthur's there to stop her, and he gives that classic villain monologue before attacking her. She pops him in the face, kills him, only for a dozen more androids to appear. She rushes for that EMP. They're chasing her. She traps herself between them and the gate. They're trying to break it down, and then, with nothing else left, she lets go of the gate, reaches for, and pulls down on the EMP. We cut forward to her and Sam back at the hospital, laying together with their baby, seemingly at peace. They smile for one another, pull out the Polaroid, and take a photo of all three of them together. Finally, we get the happy end. Ah, wait. Nah, not yet. Looks like they're heading to the boat that they hope will take them to Korea, but bad news awaits. Not only does this boat refuse to take Sam, but it refuses to take Georgia as well. Only newborns are allowed, because they don't have enough food or supplies for anyone else. I can only take the baby. 
Well, naturally, George is distraught, broken over the choice she has to make. She's pleading and begging for them to take her too, but it's no good. They aren't budging. And right there, Georgia and Sam are forced to make the hardest decision of their life. She signs the papers and then writes her baby a letter while imagining his future life with a happy Korean family. One spent in a world of peace rather than one of war, which he would have grown into if he'd stay here. She knows she made the right decision despite how hard it was, and then, when it's over, she has to say goodbye. We cut forward yet again, crossing between the movie's opening scene and one of Georgia walking alone through a city. In the opening scene, she burns her photo of Sam and then the one of her child. Clearly, she wants to dispel all bad memories from her life, to leave them behind in the past where they belong. And as she's walking through the city, bon voyage, Sam, I guess, an army caravan passes her and offers her a ride to Portland, where they're setting up a new base. And then she agrees to go with them. And that wrapped that one up. Thanks for chilling with us to the end on Mother Slash Android, produced by Hulu and released in 2021. Directed by Mattson Tomlin, it starred Chloe Grace Moretz and Al Gee Smith. I don't know. The choice made by the two at the end might have seemed controversial. What would you have done? Why don't you let us know with that hashtag cinema recap in the comments? Again, thanks for watching. Till next time.